Are you ready to take the plunge and enter your first triathlon? Maybe you've been recently inspired or it's something that's always been on your bucket list and you've now plucked up the courage to give it a go. Yeah, well, naturally you're gonna have a lot of questions that you'd like to ask, at least you should have. Now we were really fortunate when we first started doing triathlon that we were able to ask a lot of friends and even some pros in some cases. And well, we think it's about time that we pass on and share some of that knowledge and experience that we've gained with you guys too. Yeah, so today we are going to be covering everything you need to know to do your first try. Right then, let's start with the training. Now this should come first, both in terms of priorities, but also in order of addressing the areas of preparation. Now. Training for each person from one to the other is going to differ significantly depending on their starting position, their sporting background, and also the event that they're planning to do. And for those very reasons, I'm not going to give you an exact number today or the hours that they should be doing for training. However, we would suggest that you have some level of experience or you're at least able to swim bike and run to some degree and hopefully for a sustained period of time. Yeah, and once you've got built up to being able to cover the distance for those individual sports, you then need to think about putting them all together. And that might sound a little bit daunting, doing them all one after another, but we're not telling you that to put you off, we're telling it so you know what to actually expect when it comes to a triathlon. And with that in mind, I think we should introduce the brick session. Yeah, now if you're not familiar with that term, you might be wondering what on earth we're on about or what on earth we've got in store for you. Well, don't worry, it's not as bad as it may sound. However, your legs may feel like bricks when you're doing it. And that is the reason why we want to practice this in training. Now, essentially, a brick session is doing one discipline to the next in quick succession. And most popularly, we do it as bike to run because we are using our leg muscles in both those disciplines, but in very different ways. Yeah, so obviously after the bike, you will have spent a considerable amount of time sat down, but in a flex position working your legs. And that is then extremely different to suddenly being in a weight bearing, more upright position. And as a result, you need to just practice getting used to this quite dramatic change. So when it comes to training, it's a really good idea to just incorporate, to start with some really super short runs at the end of your bike ride. So make sure when you're heading out on your bike ride, you leave your trainers at home, preferably ready to go so you can get back off the bike, slip your shoes on and go out. Even if it's just for a few minutes to start with, it just helps you to start to get used to that sensation. Well, the brick sessions are as much about getting used to the feeling of going from one discipline to the next and knowing what to expect as they are the training benefit itself. So it's hard to say as to whether they actually get easier with time or you just get more used to it. But as with anything, the more practice, the better. Now, we would advise as you get closer to the target race to the event is you actually start doing some race pace efforts off the bike. And we're not suggesting you start going and doing the full race distance, but simply just five to 10 minutes or short intervals at that race pace are gonna help and get you used to that feeling. And then with regards to swim to bike, well, don't worry about that so much, just simply from a logistics standpoint. But if you can, at your local open water venue, do a short run off after the swim as a great way of getting used to that shunting of blood from the arms to the legs. Yeah, and talking of open water, if the triathlon you've entered is going to be in the sea, the lake or a river, then you need to have some sort of experience of open water swimming. And it is fine to do the majority of like the hard work in a pool, but it is a very different sort of type of swimming and a different experience. And beyond that, whether it's purely in the pool or preferably open water, it's a good idea to have some practice just swimming with some other people, even if it's just a couple of others, because when it comes to race day, you will have fellow athletes surrounding you. Well, now for equipment. Now equipment kind of goes hand in hand with training to an extent because in order for you to be able to swim, bike and run you're going to need kit to be able to swim, bike and run but beyond that you're going to actually need some triathlon specific gear too. Now you can of course and I would advise is try and borrow some gear whether that's from friends or local triathlon club just to be able to figure out what works for you or to actually just get you through that triathlon without breaking the bank altogether. But if you are to invest in anything, I would firstly recommend getting yourself a tri suit. It's not essential. You can, of course, get changed in each transition, but this thing is designed to get you through all three disciplines of a triathlon and it's designed for the job. They're super comfortable. So yeah, definitely recommend one of these. The next thing would be 
a race belt. Now, in any triathlon that you do, you'll be given a number, and that's to identify you as a competitor. Now, normally, you're given one that you would put on your back during the bike, and then you'd have it spinned around or put on your front for the run. Now, the race belt allows you to attach the race belt, pop it on in transition, and then spin it around after the bike so that you have it on your front for the run. And you can, of course, make your own, but these things are made so well and they're only about five quid, so it's a no-brainer, really. The next thing, well, is the wetsuit. Now, of course, this is only relevant if you're doing a cold water swim or an open water swim, for that matter. But these are designed to keep you warm, keep you afloat, and in some cases are essential because you will not be able to race without one. Uh, again, this is the sort of thing you may want to borrow initially and just try out. So finding out which one works for you. You can also hire them. So yeah, just make sure you get the one that fits you because that is really important. And beyond that, there's a couple of other things, but one that I would recommend you explore is elastic laces. Now this is probably the cheapest and best upgrade that you can make for a triathlon. Literally, they cost you a few pounds, but it allows you to slip your trainers on quickly in transition and really initiate yourself as a triathlete. You've acquired the kit, you've got the training covered. It's now time to rewind a moment and actually work out a goal that you want to work towards. You need to choose an event. And when it comes to choosing which triathlon to enter, there are several factors you need to consider. And the order in which they come in is going to depend on your personal priorities. But let's start by looking at the distance that you want to cover. If you're doing your first triathlon, it's a good idea to keep it short, but they will range from anything as short as a super sprint covering a 400 meter swim, a 10K bike and a two and a half K run through to a full Ironman. But we suggest you lose those long distances till later on in your triathlon career and stick to that super sprint, maybe a sprint distance, which is a 750 swim, a 20K bike and a 5K run. Or if you are already got a good base in the sports and you want a bit more of a challenge, you could look at an Olympic distance, which is double that. Or even pushing it to a half Ironman, which consists of a 1900 meter swim, a 90K bike and a 21 K run. However, bear in mind that the longer the distance you're going to attempt, the longer that preparation period and the more training that will be required. The location of your event and the cost of entry also need to be considered. Now on the whole, the more local the event, the cheaper the entry fee and also you're going to save money on the costs of getting there. Plus, you're going to have added benefits of knowing the local area and if you're really close, you might even be able to ride on those roads or swim in the swimming location. And beyond that, there's a few other things you need to think about when you start to hone in that search. Ask yourself, do you want to be in open water or would you prefer a pool swim for your first triathlon? Do you like hills or do you prefer to ride and run on the road? And if it's on the road, maybe you're not a fan of traffic. Now, on the whole, most events do tend to be on open roads because it costs quite a bit to close them. But if it's quite a short event, some of those are on closed circuits and it might be something that's worth considering. You've also got the option of off-road triathlons. If you're doing one of those, though, make sure you've got an appropriate bike for it. And then for the majority, probably 99% of amateur triathlons, they are going to be non-drafting events, which basically just takes out you having to worry about people being close to you on the bike. Now, obviously, when training for triathlon, you are going to start to naturally learn when your body needs more fuel, you need to refuel, and hopefully you'll be able to take that forward into race day two. Now, obviously, nutrition on race day does depend very much on the length of the race. So, for instance, for a super sprint, it's unlikely that you're going to need to refuel massively with carbohydrates during the race, but you probably want to take some water on the bike and perhaps even the run so that you're rehydrating on the go. Yeah, but when it comes to a longer distance triathlon, then you are going to need to make sure you've got some sort of fueling strategy. Whether you're keeping things fairly simple with, say, an energy bar and some jelly babies, or if you're going a little bit more technical with a sports-specific drink and gels, you need to make sure you practice it in training. And it's a bit of a skill, really, learning to take on solids and liquids whilst you're working at quite a high intensity and it will take your stomach a little bit of time just to get used to that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hopefully you have got the point today. Preparation is key to enjoying your first triathlon. And 
Aside from just watching this video today, it's now a case of taking some of this information forwards and practicing it yourself if you haven't done so already. Yeah, basically, I think what we're trying to say is the more you're practiced, the more you're going to be able to go there and enjoy your first triathlon and most importantly, be back for a second. Well, good luck in that first triathlon. If you've enjoyed this video, do give us a thumbs up like. You can follow us for updates on our social media channels and why not subscribe to us here on YouTube?